Good morning, I'm Mila Della Preda and I'm presenting a joint work with Roberto Giacobazzi and Nicola Marassoni on the development of a formal framework for reasoning about the precision of dynamic program analysis. Program analysis allows us to learn information on the behavior of programs at runtime, and this can be done following either a static or a dynamic approach. Static analysis reasons on the behavior of programs by analyzing the code but without running it, while dynamic analysis reasons on a finer set of real program executions. Given the semantics of a program that describes the behavior of program at runtime, we have that static analysis provides an over-approximation of program behavior, where imprecision is given by false positives, that are behaviors that the static analysis sees as possible while they're not. Static analysis is precise when there are no false positives, and in this case, we see that the analysis is complete. On the other hand, the dynamic analysis provides an under-approximation of program behavior, and imprecision is given by false negatives, program behaviors that are not considered by the dynamic analysis. Dynamic analysis is precise when we have no false negatives, and in this case, we say that the analysis is sound. The typical scenario of program analysis is code debugging and, ver and verification, and researchers have put a great effort in developing efficient analysis techniques and tools in order to reduce the number of false positives for static analysis and false negatives for dynamic analysis. In code debugging and program verification, we want the analysis to be as precise as possible in order to detect bugs, vulnerabilities, or unexpected behaviors. In this sense, the precision of the analysis is related to the security of the code. Software protection is another interesting scenario where program analysis plays a central role, but in a dual way. When speaking of software protection, we have adversaries that use program analysis to understand the inner workings of programs in order to reuse portions of proprietary code or to tamper with the code in order to make it behave in some unexpected way that provides some kind of advantage to the attacker. In the software protection scenario, the code that we want to protect is completely available to the, to the potential attacker that can use any analysis tools to inspect the code and protect and understand how it works in order to violate the integrity of the code or its intellectual property. In this setting, researchers have developed program transformations called code obfuscation with the explicit intent of complicated and confusing program analysis in order to protect the code. Program obfuscation has been defined in 1998 as any program transformation that preserves the intended program behavior while making program more difficult to analyze. Despite some impossibility results related to code obfuscation, in the last 20 years, we have seen the design and development of many different obfuscating transformation and of many research works that try to understand the potentiality and limits of code obfuscation in protecting code properties. Let us consider this simple example to understand how code obfuscation can confuse static program analysis. Consider the control for graph of the program that executes block B and then block, that block A, that block B and then block C. One of the most common and powerful obfuscation is based on the insertion of opaque predicates. In this case, we insert a true opaque predicate that is a predicate that always evaluates true. This means that the only two branches is executed at runtime, and therefore the behavior of the obfuscated program is exactly the behavior of the original program, and block D is never executed. However, the cost and true value of the predicate is unknown to the attacker that consider both paths as possible. For this reason, block D usually contains bogus or misleading code that confuses the static analysis. It is clear how the insertion of, back of this true opaque predicate adds Fourier path to the static analysis of the control for graph of the program. Thus, it adds false positives to the static analysis of the program. The absent interpretation framework has been used to formalize the fact that program transformations, such as code obfuscation, have on the, on the precision of static analysis in terms of completeness and incompleteness of the analysis. And by now, it is clear that the key idea for confusing static analysis is to induce incompleteness in the analysis by adding false positives. Researchers generally agree and say that code obfuscation is effective against static analysis, while it seems to be less effective against dynamic analysis. Indeed, in this example, 
we have that the insertion of a true opaque predicate is not able to confuse dynamic analysis, since there is no real program execution that would follow the false branch, and therefore the dynamic analysis cannot be confused. This means that adding false positives is not the right strategy for confusing dynamic analysis. So the question is, what does it mean to confuse dynamic analysis? And this is exactly the question that we had when we started our work. Indeed, the initial goal of our work was to define a program transformation able to make dynamic analysis more difficult. To this end, the first thing that we need to understand is what it means to complicate dynamic analysis. By looking at the existing dynamic analysis, it seems that they can be divided in two main classes. Those techniques that collect a finite subset of finite execution traces and then analyze them in order to derive information or properties that hold on the whole program, like in program testing, fuzzing, dynamic reconstruction, the contour graph, etc. And for this type of dynamic analysis that seem to be the dual of static analysis, we wonder if complicating the analysis corresponds to add false negatives. Then there are other dynamic techniques that focus on a single execution trace for better understanding what went wrong. For example, dynamic slicing can be used to analyze the statements that actually affected an execution that led to another state, previously identified by testing or debugging. For this class of analysis, we don't know what does it mean to complicate them yet. For this reason, we start by considering the first class of dynamic analysis techniques. Let us go back to our example. In this case, in order to add false negatives, we could use an unknown opaque predicate. That is a predicate that sometimes evaluates true and sometimes evaluates false. When we insert an unknown opaque predicate, the code present in the true and false branch should be different, but semantically equivalent. So in this case, we have that blocks B1 and B2 are different and both equivalent to block B. This adds false negatives since the dynamic analysis would have to consider more execution traces in order to cover all the program code. For example, to verify the absence of bugs or to reconstruct the program control for graph. So while the cost of a graph of the original program could be derived by observing one execution trace, this second program needs at least two traces. Following with this idea, we could say that the key for complicating dynamic analysis is a diversification. Diversify the code with respect to the input values so would force dynamic analysis to consider a wider set of traces in order to be sound. At the limit, if we have a different specialized version of the code for every input, dynamic analysis should consider all the possible inputs in order to be sound, which is generally unfeasible. We follow this intuition and try to formalize what it means to complicate the dynamic analysis of a given program property. We start by considering properties of single traces, namely property that can be verified by reasoning on a single trace, like the location of memory accesses, the order of execution of instructions, the target of jumps, and so on. It is natural to model these properties at equivalence relations that partition the set of all possible traces with respect to the property of interest namely the equivalence relation group to get, groups together the traces with the same property A. In this case, property A is four types of traces, stars, circles, triangles, and square. The dynamic analysis of property A on program P, um, if you consider uh, the, of a program P that is given by a specific set of traces, uh, we have the dynamic analysis of uh, property A on program P corresponds to the set of equivalence classes represented by the traces in P. So the set of equivalence classes to which the traces of P belong to. So in this case, the observation of property A on program P on the semantics of P is driven by the circle, triangle, and square traces. The dynamic analysis of property A on program P considers a finite subset of execution traces denoted with X of P and observes the property A on the considered subset. So, for example, if the dynamic analysis considers the red traces represented by the two triangles and the circle, we have the dynamic analysis would be unsound, since it is not able to observe the square property of program A. 
In order to be sound with respect to property A, the dynamic analysis should observe at least one trace for every equivalent class of A that has a representative in the semantics of P. So in this case, in order to be sound, we should observe at least one square, one triangle, and one circle, as done by the set of green traces. This means that soundness is guaranteed when every equivalent class of the semantics of P is represented in a set of traces considered by the dynamic analysis. And in this case, we say that the partial observation of program execution considered by the dynamic analysis covers the, proper, the program P with respect to property A. Thus, the key for arming dynamic analysis is called diversification with respect to the input values and to the property under analysis. Let us consider on the left the possible traces of the original program where traces have different colors with respect to the property A that we want to analyze. In this case, we have two possible behaviors with respect to property A represented by the two colors, green and blue. And this means that every set of traces that contains at least one blue trace and one green trace provides a sum dynamic analysis of property A. The result of diversification is represented by the graph on the right, where every trace is transformed in order to be different with respect to property A. In this ideal case, we have that every trace is a, has a different color, namely every trace is seen as different by property A. And we have the dynamic analysis as to consider all possible traces to be sound. Following this idea, we state that the program transformation acts as an obfuscation for the dynamic analysis of property A if it preserves the intended program behavior and if the property A is diversified on the obfuscated program with respect to the original program. This means that there are traces of the original program that belong to the same equivalent class that belong to different equivalent classes once obfuscated. Let us now consider some existing code obfuscation techniques that are effective against dynamic analysis and let us see how they fit in the model. We start by considering data obfuscation techniques that changes the representation of data while with the aim of hiding both variable content and use. Data obfuscation is typically implemented by using a pair of encoding and decoding functions and then by adjusting the computation on the encoded values in order to preserve program semantics. Let us now consider this program that takes as input a positive integer and then computes the sum of all volume from x to 50. In blue, we represent the analysis that observe the possible values that variable x can assume at the considered program point. And let us assume that we are interested in knowing the maximal value assumed by X in order to check some security issues. We apply data obfuscation and encode the value of variable X with its double. We adjust the computation. So for example, now the guard checks that the value of X is less than 100. And then we decode the value of X at the end of computation. This kind of transformation changes the maximal value assumed by X during execution. But this maximal value is the same during every execution of the transform program. So this transformation is not potent with respect to the dynamic analysis of the maximal value assumed by X at a considered program point. This because it is an invariant property of the code, namely a property that holds for every execution trace. In order to confuse the dynamic analysis of the maximal value assumed by X at program point dot, we need to diversify the computation. We can do this by using a parametric encoding that multiplies the values of variable X for a parameter N, where N is randomly chosen at every computation. In this case, the executions of program P present different maximal values of X depending on the parameter N. In order to be sound, the dynamic analysis of the maximal value of X should now consider an execution trace for every possible value that N can assume, thus forcing the analysis of a wider set of traces. So we have seen that diversification works for data co-obfuscation. Let us now consider control flow obfuscations. Control code obfuscation typically changes the code, um, changes the control flow of the program in order to complicate the precise automatic extraction of the program counterprograph, which is at the basis of many program analysis. 
Let us now consider the dynamic instruction of the control flow graph of a program that can be done by observing the order in which blocks of instruction are executed in a finite subset, subset of program traces considered by the dynamic analysis. Consider a control flow graph of this simple program that takes an input value, verifies the parity of the value, and then implements the um, integer division. We have applied a couple of existing code obfuscations that are efficient with respect to dynamic reconstruction of the control flow graph, and we can observe that what they do is indeed diversifying program traces with respect to the executed path. The first obfuscation is called the range divider, and it is based on the existence of some diversifying program transformation that are used to generate different but equivalent execution paths. Then the range dividers insert a switch control statement that depending on the input value chooses among one of these equivalent paths. In uh, um, the, if we, the considered example, we can see that the red path executed when the input is even in the original program now corresponds to two possible equivalent paths that are chosen depending on the even input values. And the same also for the old inputs and the blue path. The second obfuscation is called the gadget diversification, and it is also based on the existence of some diversifying code transformations that are used to generate variants of sequential code fragments. Then the obfuscation has a branch function to the original code that executes different code variants depending on the input values. We can see that also in this case, the effectiveness of obfuscation against dynamic analysis of the control flow graph are based on code diversification with, the pro with respect to the property under analysis. Last, we observe that dynamic analysis, like program testing, have to face the problem that it is not possible to test a program on all possible inputs. For this reason, they re offer record to coverage criteria that partition the input space in order to maximize the executions present in the test set that are relevant for the analysis of the semantic property of interest. These are some typical coverage criteria, and by modeling them, and it is natural to model them as equivalence relations. And this allows us to compare their, pre their precisions by comparing the uh, precision of the partition they induce on the uh, set of traces. Moreover, uh, we can compare the, uh, the coverage criteria and uh, the property uh, that we are analyzing, and uh, uh, since, they are since they can both be modeled as equivalence relations, and this allows us to observe that whenever the equivalence relation that models the coverage criterion is a refinement of the equivalence relation that models the property under analysis, then we have that any test set that satisfies the coverage criterion provides a sound dynamic observation of the property under analysis. So by modeling both the coverage criteria and the property under analysis as equivalence relation, we, find, we, we can find the, a condition that guarantees uh, soundness. To conclude, uh, we say that uh, so far we have an initial framework for reasoning about the precision of dynamic analysis and on how program transformation could, in, could affect uh, such precision. There is still a lot of work to do. We need to extend the framework for the analysis of more general program properties like relational and hyper properties of programs. And in this case, we would model properties as closure operators, and we probably need to reason on atoms and join irreducible elements of the domain in order to understand what it means for a dynamic analysis to be precise. Then the framework needs to be validated on more examples. We would like to better understand uh, what are the limits and the potentiality of program transformation in tuning the precision of dynamic analysis when the, we have to preserve the intended program behavior. Moreover, so far we have considered that dynamic analysis is made more difficult by diversification, since this requires observation of more traces. And another um, thing that we should consider is the probability of the traces under analysis, namely the probability distribution of the input in order to provide a measure of soundness or of unsoundness that considers also how frequent is the behavior 
that we are missing. Or other measures that provide a weight uh, to the program behavior in order somehow to measure precision and imprecision of the analysis. Thanks, this is all and um, I'm here for any questions.